once had a professor tell me that if a company needs a celebrity or professional athlete to promote a product, it's probably not a very good product. While that may be true for most things in life, it is that necessarily the case for these training masks. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. They've been around for a few years, and they're clearly not going away. As the fitness culture is exploding, they seem to get increasingly more popular. So what is it exactly? You know, the easiest way that I can explain it is that it's a mask that restricts your airflow during your exercise. Some say it is to mimic altitude training, but is that accurate? What does altitude training even do? So the acute effects of altitude. There's a change in the body, and then there's an effect in which that change implies. An increased resting heart rate and submaximal heart rate will increase oxygen transport to the tissues. Increased resting and submaximal ventilation increases alveolar PO2 and decrease CO2. Increased blood pressure can help increase vascular resistance. Increased catecholamine secretion can increase lactate production and vascular resistance. And a decrease in VO2 max obviously decreases exercise capacity. Obviously, these are just acute effects of altitude. So what happens once you acclimate to being in altitude? First, there's a decrease in plasma volume. Increased hemoglobin, red blood cells, and hematocrit. And this allows for improved oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Reduction in resting and submaximal heart rate allows for more normal circulatory homeostasis. Basically, the blood is just going to do what your blood needs to do. Increased mitochondrial density and oxidative enzymes, which basically improves your muscle biochemistry. It allows for increased muscle capillary density, which will improve your oxygen transport. And of course, increased myoglobin allows for improved cellular oxygen transport. So, some of these effects may seem plausible with the mask, but certainly not those that are dependent on the actual oxygen that is available at higher altitudes, such as those obviously related to hemoglobin, red blood cells, hematocrit, along with any other endocrine-related function. So let's look at what the countless studies say. One good search, and bam, look at all these studies. Obviously there are numerous studies on this training device. Some good, some bad. Here's the baseline of what you need to know. The mask can actually decrease your performance with resistance training and the mask mostly trains the muscles used in breathing, i.e. the intercostals and the diaphragm. So basically the mask doesn't mimic elevation training. So who said that it did? If you search training mask on Google you'll find a lot of different options. Some that even have the mask itself listed as an elevation training mask. Well that's kind of false advertisement. What exactly does their website say? After scouring the company's website you don't actually find anything calling it an elevation training mask. Even the studies that it references here on the site doesn't mention anything about elevation. So technically the company itself isn't falsely advertising this mask. They're just advertising it as a training aid. So what exactly is it that we learned? Real elevation training affects the body at a molecular level that nothing else can mimic, especially not a mask that limits the amount of air you can receive. The mask decreases your ability to perform in weightlifting but can increase the ability of your inspiratory muscles to work harder. The term elevation mask seems to come from those that are confused about the mask's real purpose. Does it work? Well, that actually depends on what you're wanting it for. Guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.